Welcome to Quilt Central, celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts, Janie Donaldson and Cindy Walter. Our first guest today is not only a very talented quilt artist, she's also an author. Join me in welcoming Susan McKelvey. Hi, Susan. Hi, thank you. Your quilts are so unique and exciting. Tell me how a little bit about the first one here. Well, I hadn't intended to ink on quilts until I saw an antique puzzle purse valentine in a uh, book on folk art. And it spoke to me and said, I have to become a quilt. Yeah, interesting. It so that's been, how you got that's your how idea. I started. It had been folded and refolded and loved. And so I did the tea staining to um, give the folds. And of course, for the first time, I had to write on the front of a quilt. I'd always signed quilts. Oh, that would be kind of scary. It was terrifying. Yeah, it good. was terrifying. But it was so freeing. Uh -huh. It was so much fun. I had such a good time, and I've been inking ever since. So is this a new technique? Inking? No, it is not a new technique. I didn't know at the time that I was joining a tradition over 150 years. Oh, my goodness. In the 1830s, 40s, and 50s, women were inking on quilts. They were exchanging autograph albums. They were exchanging calling cards, all kinds of inking things. And so I began to do it in the Victorian style. Mm -hmm. I see that you had an antique stamp here. These, uh, these are new stamps, oh, these are which new give ones. the Victorian look. Oh, it's a And really this is, in the autograph albums, is the kind of look that the Victorians had. These are from the 1800s. Um, and you, this is the kind of inking that I like to do. It's beautiful. And then how about on labels or backs of the quilts or just the front? I highly recommend every quilter label her quilt. Yeah. And you can do inking and do fancy labels, or you can buy them. They're pre you know, pre-printed panels with lots of alia labels on them. This little quilt over here has a label on it. Now when, and that's a pre-printed label, when I do labels, I recommend that you um, applique the label to the backing before you sandwich the backing, the batting, and the front together. Then you don't worry about it. You quilt, and it's in there to stay. And nobody's right. going to be able to rip it off and uh, take the quilt. I agree. That's a great tip. Tell me about your beautiful blue quilt on the wall here. That quilt is called Swirling Bluebirds. I have uh, an obsession. Fancy, a passion for those fancy feathered friends. Fancy yeah, feathered friends. It's beautiful. For bluebirds and then all birds. And um, so that's my swirling bluebirds in a big circle. It's absolutely gorgeous. Thank and then you. I saw there's another one in the foyer when we came in. Ah, when you ink, you can do what I did on the swirling bluebirds, which is little tiny signing in the corners the way they did in the 1850s. Or you can use inking in any size. So I've been also inking as decorative elements. And mm. Home Sweet Home, the inking is in the border, and it's huge. And mm. what you do to do that is you trace. That is, you get yourself a rough draft on paper, and then you can trace it safely on your fabric mm. for the you know, final to, um, quilt. Good tip. I noticed the one behind us here, beside us, has some incredibly good uh, tips on signing your quilt, the way they followed the motif. This is Birds of Old. And whereas in um, Swirling Bluebirds, we just did little medallions in the corner. On this one, um, I had, you can just tuck it in uh, on vines and in between the, the, the um, trunk of the tree, anywhere. Just tuck it in so that it's sort of obscure. This is interesting, too, because several of the, I see all the blocks are made by different people. Yes. So it's wonderful to have their signatures on there like that and to show it off in the decorative writing and yes. tuck it around. Yes, and well, it's important. <clears throat> I guess so. Now tell me about our tools. Tools. Um, you use, there are lots of pens that are good for writing on mm -hmm. quilts. And there are more coming out all the time. More colors and more variety. What's the quality we look for in a pen that you would use on a quilt? You want to look for three different things. They should either say permanent. Oh, that's important. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or uh, fabric, some okay. kind of reference to fabric, or textile. Okay. And then you try them and you experiment. They work best on 100% cotton because of the natural fibers. So you test them. Mm -hmm. And when you test them, you test them the way you would wash a quilt. Mm -hmm. You're not going to bleach your quilts, right. throw them into heavy. I think testing is the, the best key, because just like with any tool we would use on our quilts, a marking pen or any tool, we test. And Absolutely. so that's, that's a Absolutely. good key. And then I see you have an ink stamp and some other. Is that? Uh, yes. And um, again, choose um, ink that is for fabric. 
-hmm. Now you can use any rubber stamp, all those wonderful stamps that are available in the stores. You can use those. It's okay. the ink that makes the okay. difference. Okay, so that really opens up. You could just Absolutely. actually put any motif on your quilt right. with a stamp Absolutely. if you buy the right stamps. You and do not have some of the stories, you actually see thousands of stamps. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. so you can really They're do all a lot. available to use. That's a great idea. And yeah. here, is this how you're labeling, or what are you working on this project? Um, when I do this, um, when I do this, I do tracing a lot. Mm -hmm. And particularly, I'm not an artist. I couldn't write this medallion on. Uh, the fabric, but oh, I can trace it. Okay. So if you lay a piece of paper under, you trace it, and you come with this, and then you begin to shade, and you just use the pen afterwards. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're working on a light color, because it would definitely uh, right. It needs the power. Yeah, come through. Mm -hmm. Beautiful idea. You brought so many great quilts for us to brought see. A lot of quilts. You must love these fancy feathered friends. I, I love <laughs> it's I beautiful. Love them. Um, this is using. Remember, we used in. Home Sweet Home, we used mm -hmm. them around the border. This is using inking in the center. Oh. And again, with the computer, you can set it, center it, you can get this off the clip art, and you can oh. trace it. This is a wonderful way if someone's getting married, you know, for Absolutely. a wedding picture or a wedding or for a memorial. Right. Or Oh, boy, that's a beautiful idea. Right. Great idea. You can oh. fill an entire block. What a beautiful, Again, these clip. are traced. I don't, okay. I can't ink. Freehand yeah, well, that's okay because it worked. It's gorgeous. You trace and then later you shade. Okay, beautiful. And oh. you can use the, the ink to embellish mm -hmm. fabric that's already beautiful. For instance, I'm to do oh, his tummy. So in here mm -hmm. you drew mm -hmm. with the pen. And to do the veins on the, the little leaves. This is definitely one of my favorites. It's absolutely gorgeous. Here I see you have a little bit of trapunto. And mm -hmm. so do you leave a few stitches and stuff? Mm -hmm. I have an example of how you These are examples that. of the, you would trace. Okay. Then you start shading. You could applique. Is it difficult? No. Easy as can pie. I do it too? <laughs> yes, anybody can do it. Okay, anybody can. Do I can't it. wait because this you've taken a plain bird and you've just made it gorgeous and decorative, or right. a plain petal, right. and then you've made it very decorative with just a, a few lines. Right. Good. Let's see more here because you have a lot of beautiful ones. These yeah. are huddled on a garden wall, oh, and in this beautiful. quilt, I've not only embellished their tummies, their wings. I've done the daisies. I've done the leaves, the veining on the leaf. And the brick wall is done with a pen. This is this is amazing because it was a plain petal, and you've completely changed it with just a few lines of that That's ink right. pen. That's, That's right. totally amazing. Beautiful job. And this one, um, I didn't want to do the stems. This is pussy willows, and I wanted them to be delicate and fine. Didn't want to do them with applique, so I did them with the ink. Wait a minute. Wait, you inked in the stem. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then here, did you do an embroidery? Yes. Um, Marguerite Shattuck did the embroidery mm -hmm. for the Pussy Willows. And she used a gray fabric, stuffed. Mm -hmm. And then she used three different shades of gray. Mm -hmm. and a did this. Isn't it wonderful? Uh, one of the things that I didn't know about the inking is that it can be used for so many things. You can write with it. You can use it to embellish it. Um, you can stamp with it. I mean, it's so versatile, and your quilts show it all. So, Susan, I want to thank you because uh, these are great ideas, and I can't wait to get back. And the Fancy Feathered Friends are just a perfect quilt for anyone's home. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Today we have with us Pam Clark. She's a celebrity long arm teacher and she has a collection of antique quilts, I think like 300. And she has a special thing she wants to tell us about today. It's blending the old with the new. Hi Pam. Hi Janie, thank you for inviting me. It's really a pleasure to be here. Um, I love working with antique quilts. They are my favorite thing to do. I love collecting them. Every place I go. I've noticed when you come to Paducah here then you're out in the antique stores. Yeah. Yes. For something I, to take home. Exactly. It is a lot. It's really fun to collect them. But you know what? A lot of us have them in our collection at home. Yes. Or we've inherited them or have pieces. Yes. And pieces and inheriting a whole quilt top. And it's really important to get those out of our closet. We really need to finish them. And you know, it's really important to enjoy them. Well, it's not a quilt till it's quilted. Exactly. And another thing we have to be really concerned about is that sometimes these quilt tops are museum quality. So we want to be very careful. We want to make sure that the quilt, we're not going to um, take away the value of it. So do you wash them first when you 
purchase one or? Oh, that, no. You really don't want to wash them. Um, and I know sometimes it's very hard and sometimes I have to wear gloves, but it's really going to hold it better if we actually quilt it first mm -hmm. and then wash it. And that, that's when we finish you know, the whole binding and everything. Okay. And then batting, you go with new batting though. I love to work with the cotton batting. I really do. Uh, because the cotton batting, once you wash it, it kind of shrinks up and gives you that little old look. Mm -hmm. So, and really, I like an 80-20 is my favorite to use. 80% cotton and 20% polyester. It gives it a little bit of loft right. and it still mm -hmm. has the cottony feel. Yeah, and another problem that we have is that most of the quilt tops are hand-pieced. And it's okay to take a needle to it. Um, and a lot of them, you know, this was before our rotary cutters that we used them, so they weren't pieced real well. And we are going to have some problems with it. Um, I find probably double wedding rings more than anything, and maybe the uh, Dresden plate, but I really like to work with orphan blocks, just blocks that people have just maybe practiced on to piece to see right. if they like it. Uh -huh. I see and you have brought us one today, and it is a, all the orphan blocks put together. Yes, and, that was kind and, of nice. and this one right here, right here is a double wedding ring, which is very common, but they were not pieced very well. A lot of times you're going to find like these little poochy blocks in here. I'm not too concerned about those because I know that um, I'm going to enjoy the quilt when it's finished. Right. And a lot of us, sometimes we don't finish them because they're not pieced well. And if you pick the right design, it's going to work so that, that you can and hide it. Flatten it out a little bit. Um, another thing I like to look at when I do the double wedding rings is I use this stencil with the straight lines like this and I lay it down like right in here. And with a double wedding ring, if you notice, it doesn't, it's not real square. So if you have like a, some sort of a reference stencil that you can use, and then I like to use a, a pounce chalk mm -hmm. like this. It's a blue chalk. And then I take it across the stencil like that. And this is going to give me some reference lines so that I can um, create a design around it. As closest to the center as you're going to get. Yes. It's just a little uh -huh. old and a little askew. Be a little off a little bit, but my quilting is what's going to do it. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it so that I can make it so it fits the block. And then I also like to use the piecing as a guide. And so I take this, a lot of times we do ditch quilting, but it's very hard to do ditch quilting on a quilt that doesn't lay flat. Right. And so what I have to do is I have to make sure that the, um, that the stitching is going to fill out into the block so the quilt is going to lay as flat as possible. So when I use this stencil, I chalk it. And then I also like to take my hand across it like this because I don't want any chalk to go down into, my, into the hook area. Right out. Right. And you probably know that the hook area has to stay really clean. Right. Um, then I like to take just and do a little, maybe a little reference dot like in here for the design that I'm going to quilt for you. So would you like to see me quilt this? I would. All right. I would like to see you do that. I know you have to fudge a little when the quilts aren't square, I, but if you're freehanding, that gives you a lot of leeway. Right. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it like an arcing or maybe like a clamshell, and I'm going to take it to that little reference dot that I have right there. So if it doesn't fit real well, like the block's not real square, then it, I can make it so any shape that I want. So I'm going to take it down to the dot, and then I use that line as my guide to do a heart shape. Just like that. All the way up and yeah. back to the dot. It's a good idea to use the block itself as a reference and right. not have to work with a rigid right. square see, pattern. Exactly. See, like that one didn't fit real well because the block is, or the piecing wasn't real set. And then all the way up to here. No one will ever see that. No. And they won't expect it to be perfect because it's an right. antique. And, and when I wash these antique quilt tops, I really like to use a good mild soap. All right, so like an Orvis soap or some sort of a real mild detergent. And even just a, um, a light dishwashing soap would work too. Now I'm going to do a thing called a continuous curve in here. And then I'm just going to take up, and that's how I do my piecing. I use the lines, and what I'm just doing is like a little zigzag through here. That looks really nice on there. And yeah. it kind of it pulls it in. Helps it pull in and right. pick up some of that extra slack. Exactly, especially if it doesn't work. And then I just come in here and I do just like a little um, hearts and loops. Because this is where I really find this problem in this melon is where it really stands out. That's really nice. What do you think of that? Isn't that this place nice and flat, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Now, if you get a little fold, do you just keep on going? I do. And, and I just, I kind of just disregard the little tucks. I don't worry about it too much. On the newer quilts, you know, we do a lot of paper piecing with our newer quilts, but we have a lot of these quilts. We really need to make sure we finish them. So our next generation is not going to do what I'm doing right now, collecting them. Right. And then, um, do you try to keep a traditional pattern on 
the quilt or you just go with whatever you feel? No, I really try to keep a traditional pattern. Like I wouldn't want to use like a variegated thread on this. Um, I really want to think about how that person that made the quilt, I would like to think kind of, kind of you know, I kind of look at it and it's really neat because it kind of just feels like, oh, this is so nice. So I want to think about how would she have quilted this? Feathers were real popular then. Yeah. They, and hearts. Once they've put so much effort into some of this curved piecing, it right. is nice to continue the idea exactly. off all the way. Yes. I think that's really great. And then um, once you get them finished, you, do you bind by hand and try to finish them all the way out that way? I do. I, I do all my bindings. I will sew them on by machine, mm -hmm. and then I will um, put the binding and stitch it down by hand. And my quilts never go in the dryer. I love to lay them out and block them. I wash them with the mild detergent, and then... Then, then I block them. I bet you have some wonder, wonderful displays at your home. I do. I, like I said, I love these old quilts. It's just really fun. That's great. I'm so glad you brought this with you so that we could see actually how you take an old one and put the pattern in there and we can fudge a little and still have the piece to use in our homes. Well, thank you. Well, thanks so much for coming. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Today we're blending the old with the new. Join me in welcoming our sewing educator, Cynthia Scott. Welcome. Hi, Cindy. Thanks for having me today. We have a great project. We all have blouses in our closets that have seen better days. Perhaps we've spilled something on the front, um, it doesn't fit anymore, or it's out of style. Well, we've got a great idea for still using that blouse, but in a new way. That's wonderful, because especially if it's silk, you don't want to throw it away. Absolutely. Yeah. There's still good fabric. Well, good. Show us some ideas here. So, um, what we have, the first one we have here is a silk blouse that had an interesting button closure. So we went ahead and used it as a focal point for the pillow, added some decorative stitching and um, an extra blouse that we used for the uh, decorative piping, a whole new look. What a fantastic idea to use the, the closure as part of the embellishment. Absolutely. The uh, next two that we have, um, the uh, purple ones in front, we um, use decorative um, covered buttons as kind of a beautiful focal point and blended two blouses, got two pillows. Um, another idea you can do is use it, utilize embroidery. Um, we took some organza ribbon and used a border collection design and did some uh, embroidery with some wonderful metallic thread. Now I see on this it looks like a sleeve, so you use that as your tester piece. Absolutely. Oh, that's Extra a great fabric idea. and you can use that. And how do you stabilize that when you're going to put it in your embroidery machine? Did you use the spray based? And right. Um, actually, I used an iron on um, tearaway stabilizer okay. and used some um, temporary spray adhesive to put the ribbon down and then uh, the embroidery over it. It's beautiful. That's a great idea. Right. Well, what are we going to make today? Well, um, another pillow idea we have is if you have a wonderful pillow or a wonderful blouse and it has um, uh, an area that you can stitch on um, as this one did we can take um, our uh, batting put it on the back um, and go ahead and do decorative stitching. Do you have to stabilize this again or did you adhere it with a spray base? Or again, just... again I okay. used the spray, okay. uh, the temporary spray adhesive okay. And what we did here was took a stitch that was in the machine, modified it, and saved it to our ATAPC card. Oh, that's like a memory card. Okay. Right. So it goes right into the machine. So actually, it's the same stitch I used to create this pillow. Okay. And I've retrieved it here, and I'm ready to, to sew. We're also using an open toe applique foot. And why do you use the special foot? Well, um, it gives you extra vet visibility. Mm -hmm. um, it's cut out opening, really allows you to see where your stitch line Great. is. And using our knee lift, um, that also helps us turn corners. And, and I saw you use the needle down position already, and that helps too. Absolutely. Yeah, needle down is, is absolutely essential. So in this way, you can create a really fun, quick pillow. That's a great idea. So you can just do as much thread embellishment around as you want. Right. And then how would we put the whole pillow together? Look, this looks like a different blouse. It is. What we did was we took um, a uh, second blouse that coordinated in color and used it as an edge trim, adding some decorative braid. And uh, we sew it together and basically fold it, attach a zipper, 
and we've got a pillow. Well, Cynthia, this. you always have such great ideas. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much, Cindy. It was a pleasure. Today we have with us Nick on making fabric. Hi, Nancy. Well, hi, Janie. It's great to be here. What I have is I'm using my home sewing machine with the walking foot to create a piece of fabric. What I really need, it's all padded and everything. It sure is. What I did was I cut a bunch of strips of fabric and then I cut them in different varieties of different widths, just like if you were doing string pieces. I'm doing this and then in between I also did kind of three-dimensional where I put the folded in here and then also I took some batting and put it inside to make it raised. And then I did it again in these other areas. I also made it raised. So it's really neat. Can you show us how you do that with this home sure. quilting system? I just took my strips, I laid them out, and then I would then of course as being that you're doing strip piecing, you always put it face down. And then once you do that, now you're going to find that the walking foot on your machine will always track straight. So you really have to kind of... Get those feed dogs pulling. Right. It, it'll just pull it just straight. It's just like a channel lock on the big commercial systems. Okay. So once you do that, you get your material, you just lay it on there, and it will just track straight on there. Occasionally, if you're babysitting it, give a nudge on the handle to make it track straight. So once I have done that, then I will fold my fabric over, and then I will put my next piece on it, and then... Do you put the batting in there? Well, yeah, when I do, yeah, when I do stuff these, what I will do is I will even take it even thicker than this or wider, so that way I have a much higher raised area on here. And then add the next strip. And then I add my next strip on it, and then I fold it over, and I just keep on going. Now, I've made a, a long tunic vest out of it. I've, once I've made this, this fabric is what I'm doing, is I have cut it up in pieces to where I've made quilt blocks. I've made table runners, placemats. I mean, it's just, it's endless what oh, you can do Oh, can you it. imagine the time we can save if we do our piecing and quilting at the same time? Oh, definitely, because you have the foundation on the back of it already, and then you are padding it in here also. So it, it's, it's done when you get done. What a wonderful over. technique. Thanks for showing that to us. Didn't you love seeing those antique quilts today? I know I did. And can you imagine they made those spectacular quilts without any modern day tools? That was amazing. We hope you enjoyed today's show and please join us next time when we have a fashion extravaganza. We'll learn how to make a vest. And we'll learn how to update your wardrobe with the bleach denim look. So be sure to join us next time on Quilt Central. Quilt Around the Clock. Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. Didn't you love seeing those ink? I turned way too fast, I guess. I think I'll let it go. I hope so. Our first guest today is not only... <laughs> Oh, wait, now we got to do it again. Yeah, just, just you and me. It's just you and me. Okay, Forget so ask me some guys. questions, Jenny. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's like... Oh, I know. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs>
quilting in your everyday living. To purchase videotapes of this or any episode of Quilt Central, you may call toll-free 1-866-PADUCA or 1-866-723-8223.